my gosh. I must say, welcome to the Lion TV. Listen me, no, no, no. More, eh, if you want to cock up your foot up your side, I feel your evening. It is your scent. Everything. Want to get comfortable. Okay. So, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Most definitely. You could not be in New York City and we don't try to find you. The Lion TV show is happening. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, magnificent. Definitely. I definitely want to say thanks. I really appreciate it. You know, I went through certain things on your bio. I make sure I hide the road in the corners, you know, see me. Because I tell you, I've been reading up on you. And um, everything about you is excited. Knowing you're still, you know, when you started out and you're still in the game and still putting on that perfect music. You know, I, I definitely love that. And all the viewers out there, we have viewers right now from North Carolina. We have from Canada. New York City, of course, and also um, Jamaica, Portmore, they log inside the room here. Yeah. So, big up the Portmore Massive. Yeah. Massive. Mm -hmm. Now, Dan Penn, you started out, all right, I'm, I'm going to take you a little bit way back, all right, because I want to know, I know a little bit about you, but I also want the fans then to know a little bit about you. Um, started out in Jamaica, what part of Jamaica you were raised up in? I was raised up to, um, I went to the North Street Congregational School, the, and that was the North? North Street Congregational School. Okay. Um, that is next door to Luke Lane, that we live next door to the church, North Street Congregational Church. Uh-huh. And I'm writing my book so you will get all this information anyway. Okay. Um, my father was a man called William McFarland and Steve Adore, who used to actually guide in the ship. So I guess my mentality of traveling and right. you know, seeing all these things came from that kind of aspect of it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's so, where started out at that school. Yeah. And, um, and what, what, what church you used to go to? We went to North Street Conditional Church, which was adjoining where we lived. Okay. And then my dad was a member of the Salvation Army Church, and we went to that church as well. Good. The helper was the Moravian Church on West Street. Okay. So we used to fluctuate between Salvation Army so, and North Street. And North Street. Street. Yeah. So were you on the choir at that time, or you went on the choir at that time at the church? Um, I used to sing on the choir at Salvation Army, the um, oh. Young People Choir. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to play for summer school and I used to attend North Street Commission and from time to time I used to play organ there as well. Oh That's really? So you're pretty good at the instrument and stuff yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The piano, the violin, what? the organ. That's what so, growing up in, coming up in school, you was a good child or, you know, half and half? No, but Nobody I had to be a good you. child. My dad used to wear his gun on his waist. Oh, okay, so you can't mess with anything. No, you couldn't get it. You, you had to have proper manners. Okay. There was no issue about sitting at the table with your elbow on have the table and all these things. Right? You could not eat unless the prayers were said and you couldn't leave the house until the prayers were said. So it was prayers and no prayers. Thank God for it. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. You see how? Okay, beautiful. Right. So you, you, you were brought up pretty much with high standards coming up and then at what point of your career you realize that you have that little golden voice that you want to you know you want to put it out there so people can really hear you it took me a long time it was never in the forefront i always yes. had a job and i actually started to sing when i was going to st Hughes high school mm -hmm. my daughter's graduated from there as well okay. and um i went to studio one one afternoon did an audition for this studio, track, I work with studio one for this track, track yeah right. and they could have put out an album but this is the only song i put out at the time but mm -hmm. there is something i need to tell you there's a track called when am i going to be free that was done before no 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 really yes or prince buster you, you know that i have to go find that no you know. i have the record so you do a, yes very I very good yeah. Very good. It's on. It's on this really album. Oh, it's on the album. Warwick, yeah. Okay. I okay. have the I album. Have ladies and I really, really, really love Jen Warwick. I admire Rita Franklin. I love her as well. Yes. Um, Patty Labelle mm -hmm. with the blue bells. You know she's Labelle now. Mm -hmm. Um, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Gladys. Yes. And Diana Ross, we studied all of these people's yep. music. Right. Um, and learned to sing it on shows with or without a back of the group. That's mm -hmm. what we do. Big time, 24-7. So. 
So how how the music has evolved since you started out and now you're still there doing the music? How is it evolving? You know, especially with you. Well, it's a learning curve. Um, yes, the still name is don't sign, sign people unless you are under right. twenty, mm -hmm. and it's someone they want to groom. But there has been loads of improvement in terms of. I can do a track now, say a double for a sound or whatever I'm doing, and send it by MP3 in a flash and to a person on the other side of the globe, and that's improvement in a lot of senses. Right. And um, you know, if you're singing something and you make a mistake, you can always um, be flying or whatever. <laughs> you don't have to start from scratch because when you were doing these songs, you had to be right totally true. correct perfect togetherness with the instruments, mm -hmm. with the musician and with the artist, so that's what that was. Not like right now they could cut and splice and things like of that. Course, Back then you had to run the track from start straight down. Yes, from the, yeah, from the beginning, so that's what that is. And what was the hardest part in your career, especially in getting the music out there? Um, lack, of, lack of funding is always an issue because um, you could sing like Michelangelo, you know, if you don't have someone to market and promote and right. get you out there and put your thing on the shelf, you're not on or it's not happening for you. And they have changed the whole spectrum of um, the music industry now. It's like download and, yes. you know, some people get it for free, some people right. pay. But I think they need to streamline it that, you know, people really created these things when they were in stress or whatever their situation is. And people should probably give them credit of some kind for their works. Of course. Yeah. So now you started out with the, you know, I always ask people where do they, you know, what type of category you put your music in. But I would say you're in more like a rock setting. Would you agree with me or? Yeah, I'm in the rock setting, but no, I would say I'm in world beat because world, I'm right. singing R and B, I'm singing hip hop, mm -hmm. I'm singing reggae, and I don't feel any way about it. I mean, if I get a song and the music fits it that like that, I just deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now, as a singer, what has been your biggest challenge as a singer? You know, started out till now, and how did you overcome that challenge, or you're still working on that challenge? Well. I don't know if I should call it a challenge because we face challenges every day. Right. Um, I would say I just praise the most I am going to run this after his guidance and this is why I guess I have this longevity because I look to him first mm -hmm. and then everything gets second place and I have to do that because that's the only way to go and that's the only way I can go and it's only successful I know right. to be there. Okay, now looking back on your past accomplishments, you know, probably when you started out you didn't know that you really accomplished certain things and now looking back at your accomplishment and where you at right now, how could you compare it? There's no comparison but I know I wouldn't want to change anything anyway because mm -hmm. we went to the studio and we were singing songs, we had loads of people like myself, I'm just tip of the iceberg for all right. the good people that pass through. Right. And the thing is, um, you know, I never in my wildest dreams believed that so many years after the day, right. these music could make me go into countries of the world that like you'd Russia never or dream China of. or wow. Japan or Australia or Hawaii, mm -hmm. East Coast, West Coast, Canada and all these places. So I just give thanks that I have this privilege and, you know, well, right. um, I'm a good person, but sometimes people get me very upset. Really? Yes. And um, sometimes I'm not tactful. Yeah, and I know I, have the guilt. I know I have the guilt of not being tactful. Okay. And some people, you, you know, like certain offices I work, they would tell me, um, if you're getting upset, count to 10 before you say what you have to say. Because guess what? When I tell you what I have to say. I know it touches scones and people get a bit yes. upset and all this type of things, you know, because I remember Everybody talking to a lady, touchy. she was a pastor's wife and I was telling her something and I'm saying, um, you're not listening or something like this and she was saying, oh, nobody's ever spoken to me like that, you know, oh, really? kind of thing. So, I said, well, well imagine her standing here, <laughs> this is a simple language, I right. the lady's getting so, you know, like, like I did something so very, you know what I'm saying, so I tried to be calm and 
bite my tongue between my teeth before I say something because it seems like when I say things, people I don't, take it the wrong. I cannot go around corners. Yes. I have to let you have it and straight as forward. I see. So some people don't like that. So I've learned to do that. I have to be tactful and try to be nice. No, on stage doing your performance. All right. How do you rate your performance from one to ten? Ten. I <laughs> rock, rock. On a theater, ten so. so. But um, you know, uh -oh. sometimes. Don't you come with a conjunction? No, 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 you didn't get to do your sound check if you're looking forward to or sometimes the mic looking to drop out right. the wires and all these things so or something that wasn't in place that you expected to be in place and you sort of get angry but i noticed that when i have these challenges to face that's when i yes. do a best show what it's true nice and my impromptu shows are better than those are better than really, so right I, I take the whole thing for a job i don't necessarily rehearse okay. when i have a show um, and I use the PA as my rehearsal when I do a thing and just read unplugged. Okay. So to speak. Nice. Now, when it comes, if you wasn't a singer today, what do you think you would have been? Well, I wanted to do medicine because um, my mom was a nurse and I was very much interested in medicine. I wanted wow. to do forensic medicine, but I didn't like to see blood. But I think um, law would be an aspect of it. But I, I did accounts as well, so I don't I know which one. They talking. helped me. I'm, I'm not a talker, that's the thing. That's why I didn't pursue the legal aspect of it. But um, I can help myself with contracts and law re relating to chancery, okay. land laws, and towards and chosen action and different things relating there too. As Ladies and say. gentlemen, you see what's going on inside here? Yeah. Okay, now this is my question that I really want to ask you. Who is your friend? Who do you call your friend? My friend? What type of friend do you have? My friend is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm being that. Yes. Nobody else. Yes. No, of let's course. put it this way. If you have a husband or if you have a friend, yeah. like a say, boyfriend, a close person, and somebody will say, you reach a certain you're supposed to have a husband and all these things. But mm -hmm. you see how the whole thing has gone through the window. Um, in my family's time, you know, you love somebody because you love them, and right. even if you go no and you what. have a friend, and it doesn't involve whatever possession you have and all these type of things. Now, marriage is a business, mm. and you know, people just latch on to people because they have X amount, or what you know, some create. people break up families and all these type of things. So, the morale and all these things, and the knowledge that you used to be there is actually gone out the window, please. Mm. But um, when I have this other friend now. Big man, and I pray to him and I say, My father, thank you very much for from from the no matter what. I have something to do today and I want you Thick to and thin and, still be and I say my prayers to him and I make sure twelve o'clock I say and in the night I say and if I do something and I reach over what I pants. I am good to go yes, for that day. And things happen in a positive way and right. I have someone to shoulder my burden. I don't think not, I shouldn't say I don't think. It's not an issue. It's not an yes. option. There is no one on earth that will solve my problem like him. Like him. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, we have Don Penn in the house here.